742 is our time. Welcome back to the Morning Drill. Well, we're always talking about great gift ideas at this time of year. And uh, I think we got another fascinating uh, idea for you this Christmas season there, Mark. Uh, joining us this morning is uh, Anthony Meraki. He's, um, well, a local guy uh, who has a Bachelor of Science and a Master of Business uh, Administration from the University of Pittsburgh. He has a vast range of life experiences, which have all uh, contributed to his fund of knowledge and writing material. And, of course, during his working career, he was a chief chemist, quality control manager, sales manager, small business owner, high school varsity soccer coach. An SAT tutor, and the list goes on. He's also the author of Christo's Chronicles Trilogy, a uh, middle grade reading adventure series. And he joins us this morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Good morning to you guys. Welcome to the program. Well, what a background. <laughs> Did you like the soccer thing? I understand. <laughs> that, that's part. I was the first soccer coach. You were the, the first, first high school soccer coach. Wow. I, uh, How long I, did you coach? I, just four years. I was the guy that put the program together. I petitioned the school board, and uh, I petitioned the school board in '89, and they utterly rejected my position, my petition, because I had no, no information, no anything. <laughs> so then I found out what they needed. I put the thing together for the next year, and they accepted it. But they said they had no time to hire a coach, and I said. You mean me? And they said, well, if you don't do it, we don't have a program. So I said I'd do it for one year and wound up doing it for four. <laughs> well, good for you. It was a great experience. <laughs> well, let's, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Because, I mean, again, going back into some of this, this is just incredible. Uh, well, I came to Titusville in the mid-60s to be a chemist at the, what everybody used to know as Universal Cyclops, and most people don't even know there was a steel mill there. It was a very you know interesting job. We had lots of... Uh, uh, I had not lots of n- new interesting things to work on. They bought equipment. They set up a whole new laboratory. Uh, they put in a melt shop. It was a great time just to be there. Uh, and, boy, what a time to be there, too. I mean, you're was, talking... A uh, thousand people. Yeah, incredible. So uh, as as that started to, uh, to go away, uh, did you see the writing on the wall, or what did you do? Uh, I parted company with the, the company in, like, 1987, and then I went on to work with other steel companies, and that's kind of how I got into, into writing. My, my, uh, my job after that was essentially one of those computer jobs at home. And so I had lots of time, and I decided I needed to do something. So I always thought that I could write a little bit, that I had a good background, good diction, good spelling, good punctuation, but I'd never tried creative writing. And I thought, could I do it? So there was, there was a, a, a book club or a book a writing club in Erie called Pen Writers. So I joined them. I bought a dozen books on writing. I subscribed to the writing magazines. And I finally figured out that I didn't know enough about creative writing. But I did, <laughs> I did manage to learn and, you know, about point of view and dialogue and creating drama. And it you know, took a while, but I stayed at it. Uh, I started off with... <laughs> Uh, you know, I I thought I would start off with a novel, which was really kind of <laughs> silly, but I did, and I wrote a time travel novel, and I actually got it in front of a uh, 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 an agent who looked, read it, and said, "Well, you know, it's very well written, but it's just not a page turner, and I don't think it will sell," which kind of elated my ego and then flattened it at the same time. <laughs> but I thought it was a good start, and then uh, then I wrote another uh, adult novel, a modern day vampire novel, which. To this day, I thought is still pretty good, but once again, I wasn't successful in getting it anywhere. And as as my writing continued, it just seemed like maybe perhaps the way I was writing was more conducive to a younger audience. So then this idea, this Christos Chronicles, uh, started to develop in my mind. And so I started that in somewhere in the early 90s, and probably took me a good five years to work it all out, and I, I managed to get at least all three books rough drafted. Wow. You know, and then and then I worked on getting book one published. And then in that case, I did get an agent and I got a publisher, a very small limited access publisher, who said, I will publish it, but you have to sell it. So I you know, I took my turn. I had a wonderful time learning about or at least how difficult the publishing industry is. But I went to every Barnes and Noble, every borders in a hundred mile radius for that first year. And I managed, he, he printed something like 1,100 copies, which obviously is insignificant. And I managed to sell most of them. We get down wow. to about the last 150. And I don't know if you know uh, 
about eight or so years, seven or eight years ago, I donated the remaining copies to the to the middle school. And so then uh, I'm looking around thinking, what am I going to do with these other ones? Since it wasn't really a commercial success, it would be impossible to get another publisher. So at that time, I don't know if you're aware of Amazon coming on with these e-books. You can go to Amazon and anybody can put their book on Amazon if they want to. There's no charge. There's no fee. All you have to do is have some kind of a manuscript and you have to develop a cover. So the first thing I did in 2010, the, the, uh, the print book first came out in 2007. And that's what I said. Then I worked on that for a year, year and a half, two years, and then finally decided, well, you know, I'm not going to go much further with this unless I add something to it. So I put uh, the ebook on Amazon by myself, and then I started, and then I pulled book two out, and I started working on it slowly. Uh, it was in fairly decent form, but, you know, to do this all by yourself, you really have to make sure that it's as top flight as it can be. And I would say, I probably read book two a hundred times. Wow. Just to make sure everything. One time I'd read it for periods. Another time I'd read it for quotation marks. Another time I'd read it for spacing. Another time I'd read it for diction and usage. Did I have it right? Did I have it right? And every time you'd make corrections, you'd have to go back and do it again and do it again and do it again. So I finally got it together last May. And then I put on put the book two on as an ebook. Uh, it's it, it's the trilogy is, is a prehistoric adventure series about the greatest discoveries of mankind: a calendar, writing, uh, uh, counting, and writing. And and each one of those books takes up that. that well, there we go. That's book three, the king's emissaries, and that's the one about writing. And that's the one I just put on in October. Now that one I did a similar thing to to like book two, reading it, but I read it five times in the last week before I published. <laughs> five, sitting there, I kept saying, when I get down to two errors, I'm not only two errors. I'm not reading it anymore. And I finally got there and said, it's going on. So. That's the one that's current. Uh, that's the one concerning writing. Book two concerns counting, and book one, the calendar. When I put the first one together, uh, I had a place up at Chautauqua with a dock that ran out into the water, and that part of the lake goes east and west, so I had a perfect view of sunrise and sunset wow. right on the end of the dock. And so the, the book concerns how a, a, the young boy uses a sundial to determine the equinox and the solstice. And I thought, this is a perfect place. So there I was out every morning measuring my shadows, every evening measuring my <laughs> shadows. And the other one in there is, is, a, is a, the use of a water clock. So I had to, I rigged up an apparatus. I made some calculations. I figured out the drip rate. <laughs> wow. And so I made that all work. Uh, we're here with uh, author, local author, Anthony Meraki. This is uh, The Morning Drill on Stream Television and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. So when you're writing these books... You said you had a, a, a plan for the three. Yes. How much changed as you began that writing process and actually got into the, the meat and the potatoes of the story? Did you go back and have to change the, the outline or that, that plan? Oh, when I wrote book two, absolutely. You know, I, I don't... Margaret Mitchell wrote Gone with the Wind. They tell me. This is the story I understand. With pencil on pads one time and it was published. Now, I find that impossible to imagine. Wow. If I did not have a computer where I could rearrange things, I remember writing, coming down and looking, getting like six chapters and saying, something's wrong here. You know, I need oh, I need something more in here. And so I'd move it out and wrote three more chapters and six became chapter nine. <laughs> and I filled them in and then I'd look at and, and just editing and writing and overwriting I, I don't know how you do that with i really don't know how old time to me i would not be a writer today without a computer you, you know, know it's I, funny you should mention that because as a news writer um uh, most everything is done on the computer yep. a lot of it like you say it's overwrite and cut and paste and yeah, move cut, around sure. and re redo that but sometimes there's a story that just lends itself to sitting down with a pad and a pencil well she must have been you know? brilliant <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes it just rolls off the tip of the pen or the pencil, and other times I like using the pencil because I can erase it out. You know, it's just, oh, well, I've, I've written shorts, a couple of short stories, and I've done them like that. Yeah. And they're mostly just a little final editing. But the, to, to carry a whole 
a story, the dialogue, and, and make it fit. And, you know, you, you go on to, you always say, wait a minute, I'm here, and I don't remember clarifying that point. So then you go back and you read, so you're 10 chapters, and you sit down and you just read it. And you say, it's clear to me because I wrote it, but I doubt if it's clear to an unknown reader. And then you go back and say, all right, where does this fit? And then you say, cut and paste, out comes something, in comes something. This has to be so much different than maybe the, the technical writing you may have engaged in. Oh, yeah, in absolutely. I, I, I was not a natural creative writer, but that <laughs> See diagram 3-A. <laughs> in case anybody is interested, the writing club absolutely helped me. What that was was novice writers getting together and evaluating other people's work and the people that knew things you know it, it, you know how to write dialogue and and how to present a point of view and, and and how to how to how to describe things in a fashion that you know made it clear that that all just helped me and like i said i read a, a dozen different no, uh, books about it and the the writing digest magazine uh I, f I can't remember what year I did this. This was after, probably after about the second or third year. I submitted uh, Christo's Chronicles Book One, The King's Challenge, to a novel contest in Writer's Digest. And while I didn't win, I got a letter back from them, from one of the judges, that just, in his opinion, he says I should have won. Wow. That was one judge only. And he said it was just terrific. He would have given it five stars, which encouraged me. That was really a, a, an absolutely unadulterated you know, evaluation. And I thought, that's really pretty good. So that encourages me that it has some meat to it. So how much of you is in this book? And how much of, of you do you want to keep away from the book? I don't think there's much of me in there because it's just set at a time. It's so different. You know, this is... This is a You don't uh, have any characters in there that sort of resemble you? I don't, you know, from a standpoint of I think of myself as a reasonable science background and so this thing has that bent to it a little okay. bit but it, but it, you know I I call in in some of my things I write up I call these guys proto scientists. So perhaps there, <laughs> you know, I see myself a little bit discovering things on your own but when I when I originally got past the two adult novels, I was thinking I was going to write something with a science bent with it that was going to be nonfiction. I had thought up about ten different chapters. I went back to to my education of things, and I hate to say it, but I thought that things were not explained clearly enough. I remember thinking about pi for years and could never quite figure out what it really was <laughs> and i thought it's so simple and i thought i thought i was going to write a chapter on pi a chapter on time a chapter on gravity and all those things kind of came together and i said nobody's going to read this because i don't have any credentials to produce this and that's when i started thinking about well maybe if i write something about time and uh in in the some kind of a novel and then I started just penciling it out and how I could do it. And that's what I said then. I kind of thought the use of symbols makes that possible. Uh, when, when this story takes place at a time before there is writing, before there is counting. And so the challenge for these people at that time, whoever did it, was to how do you collect any information and data when you can't write and you can't count? Uh, I think, as you, you may know from some of the things you might have saw, is I did some uh, presentations at local schools at Pleasantville mm -hmm. and Hightown. And the question I ask him, I say, what do you think it would be like if you couldn't count? And one boy said to me, what do you mean he can't count? <laughs> Which is true. What right. do you mean he can't count? Everybody can count, except everybody couldn't count. Wow. I said, at one time, if you had a family, you would not know how many brothers and sisters you had, because you couldn't count. And I said, could you find a way, suppose you had a large family, could you find a way to tell me how many brothers you have and how many sisters you have? And they look at me just with a blank stare. And they say, one, two, three, four. I say, no, you don't know one, two, three, four. So okay. I showed them how that was possible by enumerating. You know, people understand quantity. If I put five apples in a pile and three apples in a pile, you don't have to know how to count. There's more apples in this pot in this pile. And if I go on, I don't count, but I put my finger on each one. I say, wait a minute, there's this many in this pile and only this many in this pile. Whatever that means, whatever that means. So I have to ask you, uh, it sounds like with this trilogy, uh, you stepped up as a writer and are more confident in, in your abilities. Does that make you want to go back to those earlier works and revisit those, or do you not want to touch them? Uh, 
I'm thinking of the. I, I think the vampire novel was pretty good, and it and it appeared that I wrote it before vampires were great. Missed the period when they came in, and now I'm back to they're not in such demand anymore. So I'm I I I'm revisiting that perhaps. That that may be. <laughs> All right. So tell us how folks can find the book if they want a hard copy. Where can they get it, or can they There's, just get the, the, the digital? The only hard download? copies available are are from resellers for book one. There were never any printed copies okay. of book two and book three. They're only available as eBooks or Kindle, and and all three of them can be found under the title Christos Chronicles. If you enter that in the search block on Amazon, all three of them should come up. Very nice. So, and they're all only ninety nine cents. The great number. You know, we're always talking about how music has changed over the years, or how movies or TV shows are, have changed in terms of how you get those. The distribution. It's the same with writing, isn't it? Amazing from when you started in the nineties to today. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Uh, when when I first put the, the you know the, even the other novels, you'd write a hundred letters to agents, get one answer, no. <laughs> And then you'd go on and you'd email another hundred and get maybe one answer no. Uh, so it's very you know they tell you you need a, you need you need an agent to get your your material before somebody, but it's as difficult to get your material in front of somebody as it is to get an agent. And you know I managed to get both accomplished, but you know it's still a very very difficult business. Somehow national publicity is very difficult to get. Well, you have it here, so yeah, we, yeah, is, yeah. more than of course the article in the paper a couple of weeks ago. And this, if I could do that, if I could do that nationally, I'd have a bet. I'd be Bill O'Reilly. That's right. Hey, a, a, a real pleasure having you on this morning. Uh, please come back. We'd love to have you. We'll back. see when when something maybe something will happen again. It was absolutely my pleasure, and thank you guys. All right, so you can find it on Amazon, and uh, should they search for the name of the book or your Just name, Christos Chronicles? That's the that's the words to enter. All righty, and again, uh, great time of uh, year to be uh, buying some uh, ebooks. Absolutely, they fit right in the stocking with a little slip of paper. <laughs> that's right, uh, sir. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We got the latest news headlines at the top of the hour and that weather forecast for Northwest Pennsylvania. This is the Morning Drill on Stream Television and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Got on the lucky one.